ವಿಷ್ಣು ಪಾರಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪೃಷ್ಠಾಯ ಉತಲೆ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವಿನಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ನಿತಿ ನಮೀನೆಯ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ದೇವಿ ಗೌರವ ನಿಮಿಷಾರಿನೇ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶೂನ್ಯ ಭಾರಿ ಪ್ರಶ್ನಾಚಾರೇಶಿನೇ ಕೌಲ ವಿಭಾವ ಮೂಲ ಸ್ವಂ ನಿರ್ದಿಷ್ಟ ಸಜನ ಪ್ರಿಯ ವೈಷ್ಣವ ಸರ್ವ ಶ್ರೀ ಜಗನ್ನಥಾಯ ನಿಧೇ ನಮಃ ಸೊ ವಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ chant this prana mantra to shabad jagana das babaji together as we do normally gauravir bhava bhume stvam gauravir bhava bhume stvam nirdeshta sajana priya nirdeshta sajana priya vaishnava sarva bhauma vaishnava sarva bhauma sri jagannathaya te namaha sri ಗೌರವಿರ್ಭಾ ಭೂಮಿಸ್ವಾಷ್ಟ ಸಜನ ಪ್ರಿಯ ವೈಷ್ಣವ ಸರ್ವೌಮ ಶ್ರೀ ಜಗನ್ನಥಾಯ ನಮಃ ಗೌರವಿರ್ಭಾ ಭೂಮಿಸ್ವ ನಿರ್ದಿಷ್ಟ ಸಜನ ಪ್ರಿಯ ವೈಷ್ಣವ ಸರ್ವೌಮ ಶ್ರೀ ಜಗನ್ನಥಾಯ ನಮಃ ಗೌರ ಆಫ್ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಅವಿರ್ಭವ ಕನ್ಫ 
confirmed Arduino Tacor's discovery and said, yes, this is the place. So this is the place. We have it now. When the yoga meet, the temple is constructed. So before we continue, because otherwise the time will get in our way with questions and this and that, we will sing the song of the departed Vaishnavas or the song of separation that now Tandas Thakur composed. And it's applicable. We have three disappearance days, not one appearance, all disappearance today. So very appropriate. I think I was told you all have the text. So let's see here. To get to my text. And we first have the translation so we understand what we are singing. <coughs> Prachur, Penu Prabhu Kota Gela Acharya Thakur, he who brought the treasure of divine love and who was filled with compassion and mercy, where has such a personality as Advaita Acharya gone? And so this here, Narutam Das Thakur, he expresses that all these different associates of the Lord, they are gone, where are they? And here I am. Where I are my Swarupa Moda, ha, ka, Kaha Moda Swarupa, uh, Kaha Sanatana. Uh, where is Swarupa Moda? Where is Rupa Goswami? Where is Sanatana? Kaha Dasa Raghunata Patita Pahala. Where is Raghunata the savior of the fallen? Kaha Moda Bhatta Juga, Kaha Kaviraj. Where is my Raghunata Bhatta and Gopalamata? Where is Krishna Das Kaviraj? Eka Kale Kota Gela Gora. Where did Lord Goranga, the great dancer, suddenly go? Everybody's gone. Pashane kutibo mata anale pashibo goranga munera nidi kotagela. Get it? Habo. I will uh, smash my head against the rock and enter into the fire. Where will I find Lord Goranga, the reservoir of all wonderful qualities? Sishava Sangira Shange Jekoilo Bila Se Shangana Paya Karne Narutama Das, being unable to obtain the association of Lord Goranga, accompanied by all these devotees in whose association he performed his pastimes, Narutam Das simply weeps. So, although on one hand one celebrates the disappearance in the same way as the appearance, from another perspective, absolute perspective, there's no difference and we don't lament that somebody died and was gone and we know they joined the Lord's pastimes, the soul is eternal and we have this po po poem where it says, he reasons ill who thinks that Vaishnavas die, uh, they don't die, they just continue in a different plane of existence or they may even come again um, amongst us and continue and preaching, whatever, but they are not really gone. But because they are gone from our vision and we are left here, yes, without their association apparently, at least on the Baku platform, so we lament and that is okay. When Srila Prabhupada speaks about the disappearance of the spiritual mass in the fourth canto in the story of Puranjan, <coughs> he says that it's appropriate that then the disciple weeps. It's not just some sentimental why are you crying? You are not the body, he's not really dead, so don't be fooled. No, it's appropriate. We are bereft of the association. So, Narutam Das Thakur, he's also our previous Acharya, and he gives the example yes. Sesanga na paya kande Narutam Das, because I cannot be with them, so now I'm simply crying. Okay, so we can sing this together.
150 or 70 or whatever. It's already 40, 50, 60 years after Kidabishwanda Chakravati Thakur's disappearance. So the type of initiation we generally understand that it's a fire sacrifice and you get your beads. <laughs> In these, all these cases, this doesn't happen. But still, in our Guru Parampara, they are accepted as a disciple, spiritual master relationship. Um, and then again, yes, Sri Bhakti no Thakur, we know he was initiated formally uh, by Vipina Bihari Goswami, who he also respected as his spiritual master, but and San Sri Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur, in his judgment, the relationship with Jagannath Das Babaji was more prominent or important, one may say. And therefore, we don't have Vipina Bihari Goswami on the altar. We don't have Marikta. We have Jagannath Das Babaji in the line of descending succession. And then also, From Bhaktivinoda Thakur to Gorkishwar Das Babaji, there's no formal diksha relationship. It's also a shiksha relationship, which brings us to the conclusion if all these cases, Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur to Jagannath Das Babaji, Jagannath Das Babaji to Bhaktivinoda Thakur, and Bhaktivinoda Thakur to Gorkishwar Das Babaji, they're all shiksha relationships. So obviously, we shouldn't think that <clears throat> this is less important than what we call the Diksha initiation. And, uh, yeah, that's generally how we, how we think. And I think it's a, it's a mistake simply because we can see here in these examples that, um, and that they are not the only ones. Uh, if we go back in time, uh, we can also see as far as the relationship between um, Narottam Das Thakur and Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur. There's also a Shiksha relationship. There's no, what we would call a formal uh, Diksha relationship. Because from history we know Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur, his Diksha guru is called Radha Rama Chakravati. <clears throat> And his shiksha guru is Narottam Das Thakur. But in the line of disciplic succession, as Sri Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati describes in his song Guru Parampara, or Sri Prabhupada gives the list in Bhagavad Gita at the end of the introduction, uh, we have the relationship is between Narottam Das Thakur and Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur. Uh, and we can go on like that. Um, so, anyway, So these devotees, uh, they also, we can see, have different moods, although they're in the same line of succession. Uh, but the way they not only behave, but also manifest their service to the Lord is, there's variety, there's difference, especially these we have Babaji's who are generally not preachers. They uh, perform their bhajan, uh, but just by their presence and by their example, they're also teaching us and preaching. But they don't go formally out as or even write books, let's say. We have Bhakti no Thakur, who's very prominent, uh, very well known for his great volume of writings, about 100 books and 300 songs. Uh, and uh, then Shri Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati, he introduced the printing press, Brihad uh, Vedanga, and of course Shri Prabhupada uh, followed in his footsteps. But in between we have Gorky Shodas Bhavaji Maharaj, who was accepted by Shri Bhaktisiddhanta as his spiritual master. The mood is very different. He didn't go out and have authentic books, but his 
who signed the date. And again, Jagannath Das Babaji and Bhakti Thakur. Bhakti Thakur we uh, respect and we honor as the pioneer of the today's Krishna consciousness movement because he practically revived uh, the uh, Gaudiya Vaishnava Sampradaya, which was had fallen into irrespect, the I mean, polite word. Generally, anybody before Bhaktivedanta, when there was a mentioning of devotees of Chaitanya, or the, the line of Sri Chaitanya, it was considered a sex religion. It had been degraded by Sahajiyas and other uh, unscrupulous people to such a degree that it was no educated person would respect Vaishnavas thinking they were really low-class people. So then it was Bhaktivinoda Thakur who practically put uh, Vaishnavism again in its proper place and he denounced specifically these groups who were who had, were responsible for giving it an ill reputation. He identified 13 main Sahajya sects and then there are 56 sub sects, there are so many different groups, all of them are not, not bona fide, you know, having a wrong understanding and giving a bad example to the people and people think, oh, this is Vaishnava, it's, it's not. <laughs> so, yes, Bhaktivinoda Thakur, that was his main uh, contribution. He practically rescued Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's secular movement and established it again and then but he accepted Srila Jagannath Das Babaji, who was not that kind of preacher as his uh, prominent Shiksha Guru, spiritual master. So, our line, or because we are following our founder, Acharya Srila Prabhupada, generally we don't think about becoming Babaji's. We had actually one Babaji in Islam. He didn't last for a long time. You don't, you don't need, you know, no, we don't have to get the details, but no, that's not our uh, mood. Uh, nevertheless, when we hear about Jagannathas Babaji and Gorkishwara's Babaji, we can appreciate uh, that this type of highly elevated consciousness and being absorbed in Krishna just in that way. This is not to be looked down on or thinking that it's inferior to like preaching, preachers. Because generally, yes, we say the Goshtanandis, Bajananandis, we are not Bajananandis, we are supposed to be Goshtanandis, going out and distributing the holy name to the public. But the Lord also accepts the service and the consciousness of personalities like that. So then we have also um, Rasikananda Prabhu. Let me see where I have something about him. Um, yeah, this is from this book. I just will read. There's not much information, but Sri Rasikananda Prabhu appeared as the son of a king. And he became a perfect sage, a Gaudiya Vaishnava scholar. And he was the beloved disciple of Sri Shyamananda Prabhu. On Shyamananda Prabhu's order, Rasikananda became the head pujari and served his guru's deity of Govindaji. Um, and his attentive, loving service increased Govindaji's beauty and pleasure. He enchanted the devotees with his unprecedented deity service. And after firmly establishing Govindaji's worship, he accepted Shavananda's order to preach. So Rasikananda is a preacher. He traveled for 40 years <coughs> preaching uh, all over uh, India. And he influenced so many people with the message of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And it is said that he uh, delivered, he preached.
preach to everyone. Lord, it doesn't, didn't matter whether if they were from royal families or from outcasts or atheists or Muslims, or even wild animals. Uh, it is said here one time, a mad elephant attacked Rasika Nanda. And he just chanted, Goranga, Goranga, Krishna, Krishna. And he sprinkled some water on that animal. And then the elephant became enlightened. <laughs> he became, at least he calmed down and he humbly bowed his head. And then they raised the trunk and went, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. <laughs> Possible, why not? At the time of leaving his body, is the disappearance day, Rasikananda began a very powerful kirtan. And then he left the world by entering into the Kshira Chora Gobinandeti in Vrindavan, in Orisha. So the Pushpa Samadhis of these devotees, they are near the temple of, there were many disciples at that time, they were all, they were also near the temple. Which is next to the temple of Radha Shamasunda of Shamananda Prabhu. So this is what is said here. Not much more information. We have a few minutes. Any questions or comments you have? Not much philosophy. Well, there is some some philosophy. Otherwise, we can go ahead. Yes. Um, well, what can I say about Tamar Krishna Maharaj? Only what I heard. I mean, I knew him very briefly because he was preaching in far away from me, so we didn't have we didn't have service together. But um, he joined in 1968. <coughs> one of the early devotees, and um, he, because he was very intelligent, <laughs> so he very soon he became, uh, yeah, he, he came into leadership positions, which wasn't very difficult in those days because there were only a handful of devotees, somebody had to be the president, somebody had to be the temple commander, somebody had to be in charge of this and that, so basically everybody was in charge of something. <laughs> One story I uh, heard, and I think he, he himself told the story, um, because he was very qualified, so when they were in Los Angeles, and that was before the present temple in La Cienaga uh, Avenue, so he was the temple commander. And it looked like he became a little proud of his position. So then Srila Prabhupada, to rectify his uh, consciousness, he said that there's Mahavishnu lying in the causal ocean and unlimited universes come out of his body. And one small universe is our universe. It's actually insignificant. If it wouldn't be there, nobody would even notice. So it's not a very important universe. And in that universe, there are innumerable planets, right? And one small, tiny, insignificant planet is the planet Earth. And on that planet Earth, there are so many countries. And one country is America. And in America, there are so many cities, and one city is Los Angeles. And in Los Angeles, there are so many buildings, and one building is this temple here. And in this temple, there are so many devotees, and there's one devotee, Tama Krishna, and he thinks he's very important. <laughs> so, uh, but he became a very prominent preacher. He then established, um, together with Vishnu Jan, 
traveling Samkirtan party, and they distributed lots of books all over America in the 70s. And um, he was the first person to go to China for some reasons. And uh, nowadays, if you go to Mayapur now, there are lots of Chinese devotees. So. And lots of Russian devotees also. <laughs> Um, well, for you it is not so easy to understand. I'm a little old, so when I was your age, both China and Russia were completely separate from the rest of the world. Uh, we had what you called the Iron Curtain in Europe. I was in Germany and the Iron Curtain was right going through Germany. And it was west and east. Germany, not one like today. So all of the Eastern Europe part, starting with East Germany, was under communist rule, and especially, of course, the Soviet Union, the biggest part nowadays, Russia. And we did some preaching. We tried to do some preaching in Eastern Europe. I went one time with Devamrita now Swami, to East Berlin and Poland, and for that purpose we bought Russian cars, Lada, so they would like us. You know, we wouldn't come with a Western car into Eastern Europe, we come with a Russian car, so we are favorable to our cause, something like that. <laughs> Very bad cars, actually. But we took the austerity to drive bad Russian cars just for preaching. So anyway, so we would never, it was so difficult, we would never have imagined that this one day would change. Nobody could foresee that, you know, the Soviet Empire would really just, without a nuclear war, would just disappear, basically, which happened then in 1989, you know, uh, almost 10 when, we, when I went, was 79, so only 10 years later, practically, the whole thing collapsed peacefully, the whole communist system. And then, uh, from then on, there was one devotee, as we know, Prabhupada went to Moscow in 1971, and uh, Ananta Shanti, he was the first Russian devotee. And he tried to preach, he had to do everything underground, not possible to preach openly. But nowadays, there are so many thousands and thousands and ten thousands of devotees in Russia. So, and in China, finally, which was even, well, basically almost the same or even more difficult than, than, than Russia. Because Russia, at least, uh, the people, they had this uh, Christian Orthodox background. You know, the church is there and there's some piety, you could say. But China is like, since always, it's or voidism, impersonalism. There's no God. There's no personal understanding of the supreme, you know, absolute truth. So it's it's a very. They don't even have a word for God in their language. So how are you going to explain something about something they don't even, you know, you can't even express basically. So I don't know how he did it, but Tamar Krishna Maharaj, he was the first one to go there. Somehow preached and uh, then others went later on and nowadays we go, you can openly, not yet, but still they tolerate yoga, you know, this is, this is the trick, it's yoga, it's not, it has nothing to do with God, it's just yoga. <laughs> <laughs> so, but some or other, uh, even the Chinese, there are so many Chinese devotees and they, yes, So that's my remembrance a little bit from what I know. But he was a very strong manager, and those who had personal dealings with him, he had these two sides. He could be very heavy, but he was also, of course, a very kind person. But if he did something wrong, don't be near him. <laughs> get, on, get on your case. <laughs> Which is also necessary. We shouldn't be too afraid to correct. 
don't say anything, then you will go away. Anyway, <laughs> so correction is necessary. Anything else? I think it's right now nine o'clock, but just over ten. Okay, finish here. Shila Prabhupada ki jai, Sri Jagannath Das Bhagavad Maharaj ki jai, Sri Kananda Prabhu ki jai, Sri Nisthamal Krishna Maharaj ki jai, Sri Sigurani Thai Sri Rai.